This video will show you how to extract, transform, and load the data. The ETL project consists of three parts, the project parameters, the connection managers, and the SSIS packages. In this example, we'll be running the entire SSIS solution on the same server that we're going to run our reports on, just to clarify. This means that we'll have four different connection managers, which includes a dynamic or changeable connection. We create two SSIS packages. One will be scheduled to run daily and the other will run every 10 minutes. You may adjust the 10 minute package to fit your needs, but keep in mind the shorter the interval, the more resources are used and may affect performance. Let's open the project params and review the settings for each parameter. Uh, now, project parameter is a variable that is available for all packages to use. I've created two here for connection strings that you'll see how we use, one for server name, and the others we'll use to record the audit. The audit record can be very useful in debugging steps that may not work as desired. Notice the question marks inside the queries. These are replaced with variables later on in the project by different steps. Connection Managers. I've created two connections that point to the Server Analysis Database. One of these I've renamed Dynamic Connection, and you'll see how I've wired it into the package later. The Dynamic connection will programmatically change the connection string so we can access the different databases where we're pulling the performance data from. You'll want to change each of these connection managers, all four of them, to point to your server location instead of mine. To do this, double-click on the connection node to open, enter your server name, select Windows Authentication, or enter SQL login information if that's what you're using, and select the database. Uh, that would be the one that you created in an earlier step with the same name. Test the connection and click OK. And then repeat this for the other connections as well. SSIS packages. There are two packages on this project. One for data collected daily, and the other for data that's collected every 10 minutes. Let's look at the daily package first. Now go ahead and open it. The first thing I want to point out are the variables. Now previously we'll, we looked at project level variables uh, that we created, and those of course can be used by all the SSIS packages. Now here, these variables can only be used by the individual package, and to get to those, from the top menu, find the SSIS menu, then select Variables. These are the package level variables, and remember, they're only available to this package. Now you can see that I've placed some of my queries into variables. I do this so I can easily copy a package to reuse it, and then rather than updating code throughout the package, all I have to do is update the code in the variable window. Next, I want to point out the SQL audit steps. Uh, we have a begin and end step. These steps write information to the DIM audit table, which we have in the maintenance database. Let's inspect the SQL audit begin step. Uh, notice that I'm using an old DB connection type, connecting to the maintenance database, and my SQL statement is written out here. Notice that there are question mark placeholders. Hmm, what are these? Let's click on the parameter mapping tab and we can see what variables are mapped to each question mark. Look at how they map up. The result set tab shows the variable we are setting from a single result set. Now let's take a step back and see how this SSIS package works. SSIS packages, how it all works. The goal of this package is to connect to each SQL server 
the destroying performance data and then move that data to our data warehouse so SSRS can create reports, right? Okay, to do this, we will query a table for a list of servers that we want to move data from. We'll use a for each loop to iterate through this list of databases. Inside the loop, we're going to set a connection string to connect to the database. We'll pull some information from the server analysis database on the instance, and then we will push that data to our server analysis data warehouse. The step under the audit is called get SQL servers, and it's configured to connect to the server analysis DW database. We're using a variable for the SQL statement, and this is defined in our variables list and named SQL servers. The variable is set to execute analysis.serverListGet, which is a stored procedure. If we go to this database and view the stored procedure, we can see that it not only pulls a list of databases, but also their connection string. Now, if you use any kind of password other than integrated security, you'll want to make sure your data is encrypted. The for each server container is configured using as a numerator set to for each ADO enumerator. Our ADO object source variable is user object server list. We read it OBJ server list here. And our mode is rows in the first table. In the variable mappings tab, we define the server name as the first item and the connection string or constring as the second item. The dynamic connection. Notice that the package has a data connection specific to it. Right click and select parameterize. I'm just going to show you how this works. Okay, here we set the property connection string and we set the default info for our first server and then scope it to the package. This will be dynamically reset for each instance in our list and this is done by the first part of our loop will set up the connection string. If you right click and select edit, we have defined read only variables as constring and source table and read write variables is query. You can find the edit script button at the bottom of this dialog and a new part of the application will launch where you can see the customized code. This may take a few minutes to launch uh, because it will launch a new instance of Visual Studio. And you'll need to know some basic c -sharp code if you plan to edit this at all. The main section is where we change and set the connection string. Next, we grab the max ID from the data warehouse for the instance in our loop. Notice that the item has a SQL statement to fetch the max ID. In parameter mapping, we assign the variable pcur server name. In result sets, we assign the result to ID max. Looking at the data flow, we see there is a source node and a destination node. The source uses the dynamic connector, which is programmatically set and pulls the data from each instance, remember? And the destination ODBE node bulk inserts the data into the data warehouse table. This process is repeated via the loop for each item that we are monitoring on a daily basis here. The ending audit closes out the audit table by updating it with final times 
and counts. In viewing the package that runs every 10 minutes, you can see that we have copied the daily template and adopted it to five items that we need to move every 10 minutes. Once everything is set in our Visual Studio project, we need to deploy it to our SSIS server. To do this, install and set up SSIS, create the SSIS catalog, Right-click on the SSIS DB in Integration Services Catalog, uh, choose Create New Folder, and name it the same as the project, Performance Analysis, unless you're calling it something different. To deploy, on the Project node, we right-click and select Properties. Fill in the information for your SSIS server. We are using the same server that we use for report for our SSRS reports, just as a reminder. Next, build the project, making sure there are no errors. Right-click on the project node and select Deploy. Choose the SSIS folder we created earlier and select Deploy. Next, we'll right-click on the Solution node and select Configure. Here, we'll set our load and date values to true. Then make sure the connection strings that we have in our development environment are updated if we're moving this to production or wherever we need. Then click OK. On our source, at point of project, we'll right-click and select Validate to make sure all is good. We can then view the report and see if there are any initial configuration errors that may need fixing. Now we need to schedule the two packages to run on a schedule, one daily and the other every 10 minutes. To do this, we need to set up security first. So, let's create a security credential. Right-click on the security node in the SSIS database instance, enter a security name such as SSIX proxy credential, choose the appropriate Active Directory user, enter and confirm the password. This will be the security context that the SSIS package runs under. Next, we're going to create the proxy account. In the SQL agent under proxies, navigate to the SSIS package execution folder. Right click to create a new proxy. Enter the proxy name. I'm going to use SSIS proxy here. Select the credential we just created previously. Make sure the SQL Server Integration Services package box is checked. Okay, to, to create the SQL agent job for the daily package, in the SQL Server Agent Jobs folder, select to create a new job. Name it SSIS Analysis Extract Daily. On the Steps tab, create a new step, naming it SSIS Analysis Extract Daily. The type should be SQL Server Integration Services Package. And for Run As, we're going to select the SSIS proxy account we created. For Package, we're going to enter our server information and the path to the SSIS package 
that we want to launch. In this case, it's going to be 00-Analysis Extract Daily. On the Schedule tab, set up a schedule to run once daily. Sometime after midnight is usually best when server use is low and it's close to the new day. You can also run the scripts that I provided in the solution to set up the agent jobs.